evening, Dr. Vivek. I am Tejas, and it is an honor and privilege to be meeting you. I look forward to asking you a few questions that will help the younger generation to pursue applied mathematics. Today, I have with me Dr. Skanda Vivek, Professor of Physics in Georgia Gwinnett College. Dr. Skanda has published many exceptional research papers in top scientific journals. He's well known for his research in data science, robotics, cybersecurity, etc. Okay, now I'm going to be asking Professor Skanda Vivek a few questions. Please describe your journey in mathematics and what are you exploring in math right now? Yeah, uh, they just. Thanks for the introduction. It's always exciting to talk with um, students who are uh, interested. Um, so um, my journey basically started off um, interest um, by my interest in um, understanding natural phenomena around me and okay. especially the complicated phenomena in everyday life. So one of the things that really attracted me initially was um, chaos theory. Oh. And there's a beautiful book on chaos theory by James Gleick. Um, and I, I think it's really interesting because there's a lot of math as well in it, um, especially how you know, simple equations can lead to these uh, never ending patterns, uh, which are called fractals, right? Yeah. And how these fractals are just show up in a lot of cases in everyday life. And so this sort of drew me to, towards that. And um, I ended up pursuing physics okay. um, early on because while I was interested in biology, I found, the, um, I found physics more interesting when I was uh, being taught physics. And so um, basically I did my bachelor's um, at St. Joseph's College in Bangalore. And then I did my, my master's in um, IIT Bombay. And then after that, I did my PhD at um, Emory University. Mm -hmm. And so in my graduate school, I was looking at the physics of disordered materials, um, especially these uh, materials called amorphous materials um, called glasses. And so it's quite interesting because amorphous materials, I would say, um, is sort of the door to um, collective phenomena that happen which we don't quite understand. So amorphous phenomena is, uh, materials are those that essentially have solid properties, but their structure looks like a liquid. Um, so while that doesn't sound you know, uh, like much of a problem, it's, it's actually quite a big unsolved uh, question in, in statistical physics. And for me, I view that sort of as if we can understand that problem, then maybe we can unlock a lot of um, uh, disordered phenomena that's happening. Basically, when groups of people or groups of things come together, can we predict collective properties, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of my interest. Um, and now there's, there's a lot of things um, that you cannot predict, right? For example, um, elections, <laughs> right? Elections decide the future, you know? And yeah. while you have a probability of something that's gonna happen, uh, ultimately, it's just one election happens once, and that decides everything else. So, so it's basically um, real life is is much more um, interesting when you start to try to predict what's happening around you. Because, first of all, um, if you really want to have averages, like if you want to see averages play out all the time, you need to have adequate sampling and adequate time, and that's not happening in our world. Our world is essentially out of equilibrium. Yeah. Um, and so, so that sort of drew me into this area of understanding societal phenomena. And now I'm starting to recognize that these also have very important practical applications. Like you mentioned, you know, cybersecurity. The, the, some of the things that I've been looking at is when many vehicles are hacked at the same time, you know, yeah. how can we predict the collective behavior? Yeah. Right. And that's also a hard problem, but um, it's, it's, not, it's definitely not possible to completely solve, to know it exactly, but that's not what we're, we're trying. We're trying to sort of give a guideline to say, well, it's better than just saying it's an act of God or saying 
yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. Let's um, so let's not care about it, right? So that's what I'm doing, and and also uh, incorporating data because through data, while of course you can make very good business decisions, a lot of companies hire data scientists right out of PhD. You can make awesome uh, decisions, make a lot of money for companies, and save a lot. But also you can use this to harness uh, the good for the society. Yeah. Okay. So also, I'm also like, I was very excited about your research paper into the cyber hacking of autonomous vehicles. Like in a world which is interconnecting rapidly, how do you think we can mitigate the risk of hacking using math? Oh, okay. Um, good question. So um, I would say that uh, math is something that like everything I would say is math. I mean, yeah. uh, because especially ultimately if you want to mitigate some risk, you would need to measure the way people measure risk is by one of the things is quantifying the effect, yeah. right? What is the effect if something happens, right? And that's math. Another component is um, the probability that something's gonna happen, or likelihood, right? And that's math. And final thing that's important is also the frequency, like how many times this could happen. So usually it's the product of those three that are combined for risk. And so there, there's math everywhere. Um, the way I'm looking at it is um, through traditional cybersecurity approaches, um, people are looking at how do we stop something from like entering your system? How do we, how do we detect an intruder one uh, that we do not want to enter? But instead I'm saying, let's also make the system resilient to what happens if somebody does enter. Uh, and then you have something that's gonna cause societal harm damage, right? Like yeah. vehicle crashes um, all, all around. So how do we make that society more resilient if you have an attack? And I'm also drawing um, broad interdisciplinary ideas such as, well, um, just as a motivation, you can think about it as if you were to get, like we know COVID is happening now, right? Yeah. If you were to say, we're, the only thing we care about is a person from COVID entering the country and that's all we care about. Yeah. But we know that that doesn't work so well. We need to think about what happens if somebody enters and then people yeah. get infected and how do people recover? And that is uh, more of um, building resilience, right? Yeah. And that's sort of holistic approach is, is what we want to take. Or, or even if you get a disease and that enters your body, right? Your body, your immune system fights it off. It's not that once you get a virus, you, you're, you're dead. No, no, that's not the case. So that's what... Um, I'm trying to get at with this uh, whole cybersecurity that it's it's not just in the cyber systems, but since the impact is on society, you need to also make society resilient. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, since I'm a musician who has completed grade six and preparing for grade seven exam in Western <laughs> classical piano, after having read your paper on the mathematics behind music, I'm very curious to know how you came up with the connection between math and music. Oh, okay. So I am, uh, that's very um, good to hear that you're doing this uh, great. Um, I'd love to know more about that. Um, I don't know too much about the grades, right? The grade yeah. six, grade seven. So I came with a background of classical Indian music. Yeah. I've been trained for quite a while. And uh, for me, ragas are something that um, I just, you know, know, right? yeah, okay. and um, I always knew that there's math behind it, especially in like improvisation. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just never did the combinatorials uh, before to, to, to see, you know, there's 72 Mera uh, Karta Ragas, or there's 72 like scales, right? Yeah. And all of them are, are unique. Um, yeah. You know, um, all right. I think they're, they're called modes, right? In, in Western yeah. music. Um, and so that's what drew me to that. And, and I'll, I'll, I also play the guitar, but I'm more self-taught and I'm not classically trained, uh, but I heavily le leverage my background in Indian music. So for me, it was more of something that uh, I, I've been thinking of for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, I realized that your work 
spans both in mathematics and its applications to science and engineering and beyond. What do you think is the role of mathematics in science and engineering? Oh, okay. So I think mathematics is, is called the queen of sciences, right? Yeah. And um, there's a reason for it. It's because um, mathematics is, is, a, is a major component of, of all the sciences. So anything quantitative, I think, has some amount of math in it. Um, and while physicists like to say that, you know, physicists can do everything. Yeah. Um, uh, with, a, with a spherical cow approximation, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think mathematics is, is more, um, uh, it's more obvious that, that mathematics is there in, yeah. in all of the science. So, so yeah. Okay. And like, like my example with the probabilities, right? Yeah. Um, ultimately everything quantitative um, has to do with math. And that's why I think math is a good field because if you do applied math or something like that, then you can do, you know, you can get a data science or, or any other field. Okay. Also, we have seen that you have partnered with many co-researchers. How do you select projects and how important do you think teamwork is? while constructing a research paper? Mm -hmm. Teamwork, I would say, is very important. Um, all of my papers that I've been proud of has have some amount of teamwork in them. And um, without the teamwork, it wouldn't have been the same paper, definitely. Yeah. Um, so the way I go about it is, is quite different. It's been changing a lot over the years, right? So. Yeah. Um, I think as a young scientist, the most important thing would be um, to just follow your passion. Yeah, okay. And uh, pers persevere. And so yeah. always move slightly a step ahead, right? Yeah. And I, I think somebody who with a music background is, is also very suited because you, a lot of times when you're trying to uh, maybe learn a piece, yeah. you might notice that, you know, there's some frustration, you're not able to learn it. And then you're able to figure out something and then finally um, you're able to do it, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's sort of breaking down complex um, ideas into their simple components. And that way it's very simpler, uh, similar to music where you have, if you have a complicated song that you try to break down. Yeah, okay. Um, and I would say that's important for young scientists. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What do you think are the different career pathways for an applied math student? So I'm, I, I, I didn't do applied math, but um, my, my perspective is that um, if you have a solid quantitative background, you can do anything with it. Yeah. Like you can, it depends on what level. I mean, if you if you have an undergrad in applied math, you can do a, a PhD in I think anything, or you could join a company to do anything. You could even do more qualitative things. Like yeah. um, you, uh, but if you want to know what you could use your applied math degree towards, um, um, yeah, specifically, I think you know the engineering, the STEM, any STEM field, yeah, and also like even data science. Um, or, yeah, computer science as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think you asked about applied math, right? Yeah. Is that what you asked? Okay. So applied math, I think, is quite good because you can also make sure to learn some amount of programming. But I think applied math, would, by the name, you would do some a lot of uh, programming, and um, that I think that's something that's very important, like learning Python and learning different skills. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least, have you watched my math YouTube channel? What topics should I focus on to make it more helpful to students globally? Um, I, I, I think I've seen some of it on LinkedIn. Uh, do you focus basically on math um, yeah. questions, right? Yeah, I started a series on SAT math also. On SAT math. Um, so I would say just try to keep doing because I, you know, it's a combination of um, what people want to see, right? Yeah. Um, and a combination of what's already out there. So you might have yeah. 
So why did you choose this topic, right? This SAT map. Um, yeah. Is there a reason? Yeah, because I felt that SAT is a test which students normally struggle in, and I haven't found a resource which is free and provides good information. So I felt like I should start this SAT series. And you, you have taken the SATs before, or? No, uh, I'm going to take it. Like I've already finished studying the. So oh, okay. So I think that's good because yeah. the, what you identified is it's something that's important and it's something that's not well um, done out there, right? Yeah. So that's, I think that that's what's really important. If you had told me that, uh, well, I'm just doing it because I like it. Okay, great. And you know, if you told me, and if I'd asked you, has anybody done it? And you say, actually, there are a lot of people who do it. Then the question becomes, okay, so what else are you providing value? Maybe you're doing it in, in a different way, right? Yeah. Uh, but you've already told me that maybe th there are not so many videos. So that's good. I would say just keep doing that. I'm um, Specific topics often depend on you, but what I've seen um, is if you keep posting videos, you know, you'll figure yeah. it out eventually. So I do a lot of, for me, I don't do too many videos. I do more of uh, blogs. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I write um, a lot more. And then that I've seen that just grow. Yeah. Um, you know, some, you can, you can never know. I choose a certain topic. I would think that it's really good. And then I get 10 views. And then I choose another topic um, that I also think is good. And then that gets a thousand views, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. And for, for blogging, it's different. It depends on the publication and things like that. And yeah, exactly. um, I'm not too sure about the YouTube algorithm, but you, you've really started at, you know, this age and um, just keep continuing. Like uh, if you're doing one a week or two a week or something. Yeah. Else. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Professor, thank you very much for taking out time from your busy schedule and speaking with me. I'm very grateful for the opportunity and I'm sure your advice will be very valuable to budding math scholars. Yeah, and thanks Tejas, nice talking to you. Thank you so much.